Chapter 1. The Haunting Prelude The city of London, adorned with Halloween trinkets, seemed to hold its breath beneath the gauzy veil of October mist. The lamplights flickered, casting eerie shadows on cobblestone streets that had seen centuries pass. Amelia, a lone figure in the haunting night, wandered amidst the spectral glow, her footsteps barely audible against the hushed whispers of the wind. The air was pregnant with anticipation, a chilling mixture of excitement and dread. Amelia's eyes, sharp as the blade of a dagger, scanned her surroundings. She saw beyond the festive facade, noticing the subtle nuances that others missed. It was in the way the pumpkin's smiles seemed to twist into sinister grins, and how the wind carried echoes of laughter that sounded just a tad too wicked. A sense of foreboding lingered in the atmosphere, a prelude to something sinister. As she turned a corner, she stumbled upon the scene that would haunt her nights. A narrow alley veiled in darkness, where a figure lay sprawled on the cobblestones. The victim wore a ghastly ghost costume, its white fabric stained with the crimson of fresh blood. Hollow eyes stared at the moon, a silent witness to a Halloween night turned macabre. Amelia approached cautiously, her steps echoing in the empty alley. The city seemed to hold its breath, waiting for her to unravel the mystery that hung in the air like an invisible specter. She knelt beside the fallen figure, her gloved fingers gingerly lifting the mask that concealed the victim's identity. The face beneath was frozen in a silent scream, eyes wide with terror, the very embodiment of a nightmare. Around the victim's neck hung a pendant, an intricate carving of a raven, its wings spread wide as if in flight. The pendant seemed out of place, its macabre elegance hinting at a deeper, more sinister purpose. Amelia's fingers brushed against it, sending a shiver down her spine. Amidst the ghostly silence of the alley, Amelia felt the weight of the moment. This was not just a murder. It was a dark overture, a haunting prelude to a nightmarish symphony that awaited. The city's pulse quickened its heartbeats echoing the anticipation of an unspeakable horror. Amelia, her eyes reflecting the pale glow of the moon, knew that the shadows had begun to stir, and the tale of terror had just begun. Chapter 2 The Masked Spectre Amelia's footsteps echoed softly as she approached the clandestine gathering of the masked spectre, their secretive aura palpable in the air. The venue, an abandoned mansion hidden behind overgrown ivy, exuded an aura of faded grandeur. A grand ballroom, once alive with music and laughter, now lay frozen in time, its ornate chandeliers covered in cobwebs, casting ethereal shadows across the walls. The masked attendees moved like wraiths, their costumes ranging from opulent gowns to macabre creatures. The flickering candlelight played tricks on the eye, making the masks appear alive, their expression shifting with the play of light and shadow. The air was heavy with incense, its scent mingling with the faint undertone of desperation. Amelia, her eyes masked by a delicate lace veil, mingled among the masked revelers. The atmosphere was charged with a sense of anticipation and dread, as if the room itself held its breath, waiting for the revelation of long-buried secrets. The guests whispered in hushed tones, their voices drowned by the haunting melodies of a distant piano, the notes hanging in the air like ghostly apparitions. In a corner, Amelia overheard a conversation, the words laden with cryptic meaning. The masked specter, it seemed, was more than just a society of Halloween enthusiasts. They spoke of ancient rites and rituals, of a connection to a world beyond the living. Amelia's heart quickened. She was on the verge of unraveling a truth darker than she had ever imagined. The grand hall was adorned with masks, hundreds of them, each a unique creation, reflecting the souls of their wearers. The masks seemed to watch Amelia as she delved deeper, their painted eyes following her every move. The room felt alive with the whispers of the past, the secrets of the masked specter intertwined with the very fabric of the mansion. Amelia found herself drawn toward a masked figure, their mask an exquisite replica of a raven in flight. 
Their eyes, hidden behind the mask's hollow sockets, held a depth of knowledge that sent shivers down her spine. The figure spoke in riddles, their words a labyrinth of meaning and ambiguity. As the conversation unfolded, Amelia felt as though she had crossed a threshold into a world where reality and illusion intertwined, where masks concealed not just faces, but truths. The chapter unfolded like a midnight dance, the masked figures swaying to the haunting music, their secrets buried beneath layers of silk and lace. Amelia, her senses heightened, knew that she was on the brink of uncovering something profound. The masked specter held the key to the mystery, and within the walls of the mansion, amidst the ghostly figures and fading echoes of forgotten laughter, the truth waited to be unmasked. Chapter 3 The Ghostly Trail Amelia's pursuit of the truth led her deeper into the heart of darkness, guiding her to a forgotten graveyard on the outskirts of the city. The night was moonlit, casting an ethereal glow upon the moss-covered tombstones, making them resemble spectral sentinels guarding ancient secrets. The wind, carrying the scent of damp earth and decaying leaves, whispered through the skeletal branches of trees, creating an eerie melody that sent shivers down Amelia's spine. The graveyard seemed to breathe with a life of its own, as if the spirits of the departed were stirring, restless under the silvered light. Amelia's footsteps echoed softly as she navigated the labyrinthine paths, her lantern casting elongated shadows that danced upon the graves. The air was thick with the aura of the supernatural, as though the veil between the living and the dead had grown thin. Amelia's search led her to a crumbling crypt, its stone facade weathered by time. As she entered, the air grew colder, and the scent of ancient dust filled her nostrils. The crypt was a sanctuary of forgotten souls, their names etched in fading letters upon the walls. In the dim light, Amelia discovered an ancient tome, the Book of Shadows, resting upon a stone pedestal, its pages brittle with age. With trembling fingers, she opened the book, revealing pages adorned with cryptic symbols and eerie illustrations. The language within was arcane, a fusion of forgotten tongues and forbidden knowledge. As she deciphered the text, the words seemed to come alive, resonating with a sinister energy. The illustrations depicted grotesque rituals and spectral entities, their eyes seeming to follow Amelia's every move. Amelia's mind swirled with ancient incantations and dark secrets as she pieced together the connection between the murders and the occult. The Book of Shadows spoke of a Halloween tradition long buried in the annals of history, a ritual that sought to harness the energies of the night for unspeakable purposes. The graveyard, once a sanctuary, had become a stage for a macabre performance and the victims mere players in a ritualistic drama. As Amelia delved deeper into the text, the boundaries between the living and the dead blurred. She felt the presence of unseen eyes upon her, heard the faint echoes of ghostly whispers carried by the wind. The crypt seemed to come alive with a spectral energy, enveloping her in a chilling embrace. The chapter unfolded like a ghost story, weaving a tapestry of ancient rites and supernatural forces where the past bled into the present and the living danced with the departed in a macabre waltz. Chapter 4 The Midnight Masquerade The night of the Grand Midnight Masquerade arrived, casting a spell over the city. The venue, a once opulent ballroom now shrouded in an atmosphere of faded glamour, awaited the arrival of the masked specter and their guests. Chandeliers adorned with cobwebs like gossamer ghosts hung from the ceiling, casting a dim, ethereal glow upon the revelers below. As the clock struck midnight, the attendees, each adorned in masks that concealed their identities, glided onto the dance floor. The air was heavy with the scent of roses and vanilla, mingling with the musky undertone of ancient wood. Music, hauntingly beautiful, echoed through the hall, played by unseen hands upon a grand piano that seemed to have a life of its own. Amidst the swirling dancers, Amelia moved with grace, her eyes hidden behind the lace veil of her mask. 
The masks around her held a mysterious allure, their expressions shifting as they moved, creating an illusion of life. The attendees whispered in hushed tones, their voices carrying secrets that mingled with the melancholic notes of the piano. The masks seemed to come alive, their painted eyes watching Amelia as she navigated the sea of masked figures. Each mask was a work of art, telling a story of its own. Some were adorned with feathers and jewels, others with intricate carvings and macabre motifs. Behind each mask lay a hidden identity, a truth waiting to be unveiled. Amelia's attention was drawn to a masked figure in the corner, their mask an exquisite replica of a raven in flight. Their eyes, hidden behind the mask's hollow sockets, bore into her soul with a depth of knowledge that sent shivers down her spine. She approached the figure, the air crackling with an energy that was both electrifying and terrifying. The masked figure spoke in riddles, their words weaving a tapestry of enigma and revelation. They spoke of ancient prophecies and forgotten lore, of a world where masks held the power to transcend the boundaries of reality. As the conversation unfolded, Amelia felt as though she had entered a dreamscape where the line between truth and illusion blurred, and the masks they wore became more than mere disguises. The grandeur of the masquerade contrasted sharply with the underlying tension in the room. The masks, once symbols of mystery, now felt like veils hiding not just faces, but entire worlds. Each reveler seemed to carry a secret burden, their eyes haunted by the knowledge of what lay beneath the masks. As the midnight hour approached, the masks seemed to lose their grip on reality. Faces twisted into grotesque expressions, and the air grew heavy with a sense of impending doom. The grand ballroom, once a sanctuary of elegance, now felt like a battleground where the forces of light and darkness clashed. Amelia found herself drawn into a dance, her masked partner leading her with an otherworldly grace. The dance became a dance of souls, a ballet of hidden truths and unspoken desires. The masks around them blurred into a whirl of colors, their expressions merging into a surreal mosaic of emotion. As the final notes of the piano faded into the night, the masks seemed to sigh in unison, their secrets buried once more beneath layers of silk and lace. The chapter ended with a lingering sense of foreboding, as though the masquerade had unveiled more than just the faces behind the masks. It had revealed the very essence of the masked specter's power, leaving Amelia with a chilling realization that the true mystery had only just begun. Chapter 5 The Witching Hour The witching hour descended upon the city like a shroud, and with it came an eerie stillness that hung in the air like a heavy fog. Amelia, her heart pulsating with a mixture of fear and determination, found herself drawn towards an ancient chapel hidden deep within the heart of London. The chapel, weathered by time and forgotten by the world, stood as a testament to centuries gone by, its walls adorned with faded frescoes depicting forgotten gods and spectral beings. As she stepped inside, the air grew colder, carrying the scent of age-old incense and the echoes of long-forgotten prayers. The chapel was cloaked in darkness, the only illumination coming from the flickering candles that cast dancing shadows upon the walls. Symbols of arcane power were etched into the stone floor, their presence palpable in the silence. Amelia's eyes, hidden behind the lace veil of her mask, scanned the room. At the altar a figure stood, their silhouette blending with the darkness. The figure, draped in robes adorned with esoteric symbols, seemed like a specter summoned from the pages of an ancient grimoire. Before them lay an ornate tome, the very book of shadows that had guided Amelia's journey into the unknown. The figure's voice, rich with the resonance of ancient incantations, filled the chapel. They spoke in a language that seemed to reverberate with the power of forgotten gods, their words carrying the weight of centuries-old secrets. The candles flickered in response, their flames dancing to the rhythm of the incantation, casting eerie shadows upon the walls. Amelia approached cautiously, her senses heightened by the supernatural energy that permeated the air. The figure acknowledged her presence with a nod, 
their eyes gleaming with an otherworldly wisdom. The tension in the room was palpable, as though the very fabric of reality was being stretched thin, and the boundaries between the living and the dead were dissolving. With bated breath, Amelia listened as the figure revealed the true nature of the masked specter's power. They spoke of a ritual, a dark ceremony that sought to harness the energies of Halloween night to transcend the mortal realm. The victims, dressed in costumes that represented ancient deities, were to be sacrificed to awaken a primordial force that slumbered beneath the city. Amelia's mind reeled with the implications of the revelation. The masked specter was not merely a society of enthusiasts, but a cult, its members practitioners of a forbidden art that dated back to a time when gods walked the earth. The victims were chosen not at random, but with a purpose, their deaths serving as a catalyst for a cataclysmic event that threatened to consume the city. As the figure concluded their revelation, the very air seemed to crackle with energy. The ritual was nearing its culmination, and the city stood on the precipice of an abyss. Amelia, her resolve stealing against the encroaching darkness, knew that she had to act, not just as an investigator, but as a guardian of the city's very soul. With a swift motion, she removed her mask, her eyes meeting those of the figure with a fierce determination. The chapel trembled with the weight of her decision, and the figure's gaze softened, as though recognizing the spirit of a warrior within her. The chapter ended in a crescendo of anticipation, the air thick with the scent of impending doom. Amelia, unmasked and unyielding, prepared herself for the battle that lay ahead, knowing that the witching hour was not just a time on the clock, but a harbinger of the most profound darkness the city had ever known. Chapter 6 Veil of Shadows the city held its breath as Amelia embarked on her final quest, guided by the cryptic knowledge gained from the chapel. The streets, once bustling with life, now felt like an abandoned stage where the curtains of night had fallen, shrouding everything in an impenetrable darkness. The wind whispered ancient secrets, carrying with it the scent of impending change. Amelia's steps were purposeful, her path illuminated by the spectral glow of streetlights that flickered like fading stars. Her eyes, devoid of the mask that had concealed her identity, bore the weight of the city's hopes. She ventured into the heart of the masked specter's power, a place where shadows danced with malevolent glee. The abandoned theater, an imposing structure with crumbling facades and broken windows, stood as a testament to forgotten dreams. As Amelia entered, the air grew thick with anticipation, the very walls seemingly alive with unseen eyes. The theater's grand hall, once adorned with velvet curtains and opulent chandeliers, was now a canvas for darkness, its elegance tarnished by the passage of time. Amelia ascended the staircase, her footsteps echoing in the emptiness. The flickering candles that lined the hallway cast eerie, elongated shadows that seemed to writhe like specters. The atmosphere was heavy with the scent of ancient incense, and the distant sound of a mournful melody hung in the air, played by unseen hands upon a phantom piano. At the heart of the theater, Amelia discovered the masked specter's inner sanctum, a chamber adorned with arcane symbols and flickering candlelight. The air crackled with energy, as though the very fabric of reality was warped within its confines. The masked specter, their true identity still hidden, stood before an altar, their figure silhouetted against the pale glow of a blood-red moon that filtered through a stained-glass window. The masked specter's voice resonated through the chamber, their incantations invoking ancient deities and forgotten powers. The room seemed to pulse with supernatural energy, and the shadows that adorned the walls took on a life of their own, dancing to the rhythm of the ritual. The tension in the air was palpable, as though the very walls of reality were closing in, and the city itself trembled on the edge of an abyss. Amelia, her eyes ablaze with determination, stepped forward. The masked specter turned, their eyes meeting hers with a mixture of surprise and recognition. In that moment, the truth hung in the air like a blade, the battle between light and darkness had reached its climax, 
and the fate of the city hung in the balance. The chapter unfolded like a feverish nightmare, the air thick with the scent of incense and the bitter taste of inevitability. Amelia's every movement seemed to echo with the weight of destiny, and the masked specter's incantations became a cacophony of power and desperation. The room seemed to warp and twist, its very essence manipulated by the forces at play. As the ritual reached its zenith, the masked specter's figure seemed to blur, their features shifting and contorting as though torn between two worlds. The very fabric of reality wavered, and Amelia knew that she stood at the threshold of an unimaginable force. With a final surge of determination, she chanted an incantation of her own, channeling the city's collective willpower into a singular act of defiance. The room exploded into blinding light, a crescendo of power that eclipsed the darkness. The masked specter's figure contorted, writhing in agony as the ritual was torn asunder. The very walls of the theater trembled, and the shadows that had danced with malevolence now seemed to flee in terror. Amelia's vision blurred as the sheer magnitude of the event overwhelmed her senses. When the light finally dimmed, she found herself standing amidst the ruins of the theater, the masked specter's power extinguished like a candle in the wind. The chapter ended in a moment of eerie silence, broken only by the distant sound of a clock striking midnight. The city, once shrouded in darkness, now stood bathed in the soft glow of dawn. Amelia, her eyes heavy with exhaustion, knew that the battle had been won, but at a price. The city had been saved, but the scars of the night would linger, a reminder of the darkness that had once threatened to consume everything in its path. Chapter 7 Dawn of Redemption The first light of dawn pierced the remnants of the night, casting a golden hue upon the city that had emerged victorious but scarred. Amelia stood amidst the ruins of the theater, her eyes tracing the patterns of the rising sun as if seeking solace in its warm embrace. The air, once heavy with the scent of incense and fear, now carried the promise of a new beginning. In the aftermath of the battle, the city seemed to sigh in relief, its heartbeat slowing to a steady rhythm. The masked specter's power had been extinguished, but the echoes of the night lingered, etched into the very fabric of the city's soul. The dawn was a bittersweet symphony, a reminder of the resilience of the human spirit and the indomitable will to survive. Amelia's gaze shifted to the horizon, where the silhouette of the city stood against the canvas of the waking sky. The buildings, once ominous in the darkness, now bore the scars of the night's ordeal, their windows shattered and facades marred. Yet, amidst the destruction, there was a glimmer of hope, the promise of rebuilding and renewal. As the city slowly awakened, its citizens emerged from the safety of their homes, their faces reflecting a mixture of relief and disbelief. The truth of the masked specter's existence had been exposed, and the city could finally begin to heal. Amelia's actions had not only saved lives, but had also unmasked the darkness that had plagued the city for far too long. In the heart of the city, a crowd had gathered, their eyes fixed upon the ruins of the theater. It was a solemn gathering, a collective acknowledgement of the night's events and the bravery of those who had fought against the darkness. A sense of unity pervaded the air, as if the city itself had become a tapestry of shared experiences and shared triumphs. Amelia, her presence a beacon of hope, stepped forward. The crowd fell silent, their eyes drawn to her like moths to a flame. In her voice, there was a resonance of strength and determination, a testament to the human spirit's ability to endure even in the face of the most profound darkness. She spoke of the city's resilience, of the bravery of its citizens, and of the power of unity. Her words were a balm to the wounded soul of the city, soothing the wounds of the night and inspiring a sense of purpose. The crowd listened, their hearts swelling with pride, as Amelia painted a vision of a future where the city stood stronger and more united than ever before. As her words resonated through the air, the sun rose higher, 
its warm light washing over the city like a cleansing tide. The chapter ended with a sense of renewal, a promise of redemption that hung in the air like a gentle breeze. The city, once shrouded in darkness, had found its dawn, and the scars of the night had become symbols of resilience and strength. Amelia, her eyes reflecting the morning sun, knew that the battle was over, but the journey was far from finished. The city had been saved, but its true healing would come from within, from the courage of its citizens and the indomitable spirit that had emerged victorious from the night's ordeal. The dawn of redemption had arrived, and the city stood ready to embrace the future, no longer haunted by the shadows of the past. Chapter 8 Echoes of the Masked Spectre In the days following the defeat of the Masked Spectre, the city began to rebuild. The scars left by the night of darkness were slowly healing, but the echoes of the enigmatic cult lingered like a ghostly presence. Amelia, once the city's mysterious savior, now found herself at the center of attention. Reporters gathered, cameras flashing, seeking to capture the face behind the legend. But she remained an enigma, her true identity hidden behind a veil of anonymity. Amelia's days were spent tirelessly working, not just as an investigator, but as a symbol of hope. The city's gratitude was palpable, each smile and handshake a testament to her courage. Yet, beneath the surface, a sense of unease lingered. The masked specter's secrets, once buried deep, were now the city's most tantalizing mystery. One night, Amelia found herself drawn to the city's archives, a labyrinthine maze of dusty manuscripts and forgotten lore. The air was heavy with the scent of ancient parchment, and the flickering candlelight cast eerie shadows upon the shelves. As she delved into the city's history, she stumbled upon references to a masked society that dated back centuries, a society shrouded in mystery and linked to inexplicable phenomena. The deeper Amelia delved, the more obscure the references became. Tales of masked figures appearing in times of crisis, their motives unknown, were whispered through the ages. Legends of a secret order, the true purpose of which remained a tantalizing riddle, filled the pages of long-forgotten tomes. The masked specter, it seemed, was not a recent phenomenon, but a recurring enigma that had haunted the city for generations. Amelia's mind buzzed with questions. What was the masked specter's true purpose? Why did they resurface now, after centuries of silence? The city's history seemed interwoven with the cult's existence, a tapestry of secrets waiting to be unraveled. In her pursuit of answers, Amelia sought out the city's elders, wise scholars, and historians who held the key to the city's past. In a dimly lit library, she met an elderly historian, his eyes twinkling with knowledge. He spoke of ancient prophecies and masked guardians, of a balance between light and darkness that had persisted since time immemorial. The historian's words painted a picture of a city teetering on the edge of a mystical abyss, its fate bound to the whims of the masked specter. He spoke of a delicate equilibrium, disrupted by the cult's resurgence and the need for a guardian to restore the balance. Amelia, her eyes alight with determination, realized that her battle was not just against the physical manifestations of darkness, but against an ancient force that had shaped the city's destiny. As the chapter unfolded, the city seemed to come alive with a newfound energy. The masked specter's defeat had not just saved lives, but had reignited a sense of purpose. Citizens embraced their roles as guardians of the city, their spirits unyielding against the looming shadows. The chapter ended with a sense of foreboding, as though the city stood on the precipice of a greater battle, a battle that would test its very essence and determine its place in the cosmic tapestry of existence. The echoes of the masked specter lingered, their presence a haunting reminder of the mysteries that still awaited, and the city braced itself for the challenges yet to come. Chapter 9 The Enigmatic Pact In the wake of the masked specter's defeat, a peculiar stillness settled over the city, as if the very air held its breath in anticipation. Amelia, now an emblem of both mystery and heroism, found herself embroiled in a labyrinth of enigmas. 
The city, though on the surface a bustling metropolis, harbored secrets that few could fathom. Amelia's investigations led her to a clandestine gathering hidden within the depths of the city's oldest library. The room, illuminated by the soft glow of ancient manuscripts, seemed frozen in time. Scholars and occultists, their eyes ablaze with curiosity, gathered around a table adorned with esoteric symbols and a map that seemed to depict the city's ley lines. Among them was an enigmatic figure, known only as the Librarian. His eyes, deep pools of wisdom, held a millennia-old knowledge, and his voice resonated with the authority of one who had delved into the darkest corners of existence. He revealed a truth that sent shivers down Amelia's spine. The masked specter was not just a cult, but a manifestation of an age-old pact, a pact that bound the city to forces beyond mortal comprehension. The pact, forged in a time long forgotten, was an alliance between the city's guardians and an ancient entity known as the Veil Weaver. The Veil Weaver, a cosmic being of immense power, existed beyond the veil of reality, its motives unfathomable to the human mind. In exchange for the city's prosperity and protection, the Guardians were tasked with maintaining the balance between the mundane world and the supernatural forces that lurked in the shadows. However, over the centuries, the pact had been distorted, its true purpose obscured by the passage of time and the ambitions of those who sought to wield its power. The masked specter, once a noble order of guardians, had been corrupted, their rituals twisted into dark ceremonies that threatened to tip the balance in favor of the otherworldly entities. Amelia, her eyes wide with revelation, realized the gravity of the situation. The city's fate was intricately woven into the threads of an ancient cosmic tapestry, and the masked specter's resurgence had been a symptom of a greater imbalance. The Veil Weaver, displeased with the distortion of the pact, had allowed the cult's power to grow, testing the city's resolve and determination to uphold its end of the bargain. With newfound purpose, Amelia pledged to restore the pact to its original form, to re-establish the connection between the Guardians and the Veil Weaver, and to ensure the city's protection against both mundane and supernatural threats. The Librarian, his gaze filled with a mixture of hope and trepidation, bestowed upon her an ancient artifact, the Key of Eternity, an artifact said to possess the power to bridge the gap between worlds. Armed with the knowledge of the pact and the Key of Eternity, Amelia set forth on her final quest. The city, unaware of the cosmic forces at play, continued its daily life, oblivious to the impending battle that would determine its very existence. The chapter ended with a sense of urgency, as though the city stood at the edge of a precipice, waiting to either fall into the abyss or soar into a new era of enlightenment and protection. The enigmatic pact, once hidden in the annals of history, now lay at the heart of the city's destiny, and Amelia, the city's chosen guardian, prepared herself for the ultimate confrontation with the Veil Weaver and the forces that lurked beyond the Veil. Chapter 10 the Veil Weaver's Challenge The city slept, unaware of the cosmic drama unfolding beneath its surface. Amelia, bearing the weight of an ancient pact and armed with the key of eternity, ventured into the heart of the Veil Weaver's realm, a dimension that existed beyond the boundaries of mortal understanding. The air crackled with arcane energy, and the very fabric of reality seemed to warp and twist as though she had stepped into a dreamscape woven from the threads of cosmic existence. The Veil Weaver's domain was a surreal landscape where reality merged with imagination. Floating islands, adorned with otherworldly flora, hovered amidst a sea of shimmering stardust. The sky above was a tapestry of shifting colors and constellations that danced to an otherworldly melody. Ethereal creatures, their forms ever-changing, flitted through the air, their eyes filled with ancient wisdom. Amelia, her steps guided by an unseen force, moved with purpose. The key of eternity, a luminescent artifact, pulsed with a power that resonated with the very essence of the Veil Weaver's realm. The Veil Weaver, a being of cosmic majesty, materialized before her, its form a shifting collage of galaxies and nebulae, 
its eyes like twin stars that held the knowledge of eons. The Veil Weaver spoke, its voice echoing through the astral expanse. It posed a challenge, a trial of resolve and understanding that would determine the city's fate. Amelia, her determination unyielding, accepted the challenge, knowing that the answers she sought were intertwined with the Veil Weaver's enigmatic wisdom. The challenge manifested as a series of trials, each one a test of Amelia's courage and insight. In one trial, she faced a mirror that reflected her deepest fears and insecurities. With steely resolve, she confronted her own darkness, embracing it as a part of her being. In another trial, she encountered a cosmic riddle, its solution hidden within the patterns of the stars. With keen intellect, she deciphered the riddle, unraveling its secrets like a scholar of ancient lore. As the trials progressed, Amelia's understanding of the city's role in the cosmic tapestry deepened. The pact, she realized, was not just a transaction of power, but a symbiotic relationship between the mundane and the supernatural. The city's prosperity and protection were intertwined with its ability to maintain harmony, not just within its own borders, but within the very fabric of existence. With each trial conquered, the Veil Weaver's realm responded, its surreal landscape shifting and morphing in response to Amelia's progress. The very essence of the realm seemed to pulse with approval, as though the Veil Weaver itself acknowledged her wisdom and determination. The trials, though arduous, became a journey of enlightenment as Amelia's understanding of the city's destiny expanded. In the final trial, Amelia stood before a cosmic tapestry, a living mural that depicted the city's history, from its humble beginnings to its most glorious achievements. The tapestry revealed the city's resilience, its ability to overcome adversity, and the unyielding spirit of its people. Amelia, her heart filled with pride, knew that the city's fate was not just in her hands, but in the hands of every citizen who had ever called it home. With a surge of determination, Amelia placed the key of eternity upon the tapestry, its light blending with the cosmic threads. The tapestry came to life, its colors vibrant and alive, as though infused with the very essence of the city's soul. The Veil Weaver's approval resonated through the realm, its form shimmering with newfound brilliance. The chapter culminated in a moment of cosmic revelation. The Veil Weaver, satisfied with Amelia's understanding and resolve, bestowed upon her the mantle of the city's eternal guardian. She became the Beacon of Harmony, a title that carried the weight of centuries of guardians who had upheld the pact. The Veil Weaver, its eyes filled with cosmic wisdom, imparted its blessings upon the city and its chosen protector, ensuring that the balance between the mundane and the supernatural would be maintained for generations to come. Amelia, now the beacon of harmony, returned to the city, her heart ablaze with newfound purpose. The city, though unaware of the cosmic drama that had transpired, seemed to respond to her presence with a sense of serenity. The air was infused with a subtle magic, and the citizens, though oblivious to the cosmic forces at play, carried themselves with a newfound confidence. The city had been reborn, its destiny interwoven with the tapestry of the stars. The Veil Weaver's challenge had been met, and the city's eternal guardian stood ready to embrace her role. The chapter ended with a sense of closure and renewal, as though a cosmic cycle had reached its zenith, and a new era of harmony had begun. The story of the Veil Weaver and the Beacon of Harmony became a whispered legend passed down through generations. The city, once plagued by shadows, now stood as a beacon of light and balance, its citizens living their lives under the watchful eye of their eternal guardian. And though the Veil Weaver's realm remained a mystery, its influence was felt in every corner of the city, guiding its destiny and ensuring its prosperity for all time.